God bless you guys in Jesus name. I hope you're all doing well. I am out here in what excuse me. I'm out here again in Whittier Boulevard and Soto Street. Yep, around here. Yep, here again and I'm here with a friend, Brother Hello. Lester. Greetings to everybody in Jesus name. And there's a shirt right there. And it says, Jesus said you must be born again. Right. And that's from John 3.7. Anything you want to tell them? Nothing else? It's okay, bro. It's okay. But uh, yeah, we're just um, we're just um, out here. Um, you know, I'm just doing some preaching, and uh, here's we with me. And um, yeah, we're just um, out here, you know, trying to. Well, I'm just preaching, you know. And there's many people out here, so a lot of them, and. Uh, I'll be letting him um, record me so you guys can just watch, okay? But um, we're doing it, it's for God's glory. We do things for God's glory because we love God and we want the world to know. The world needs to get, the people need to get saved. This world needs to come to repentance before it's too late. Jesus is coming soon. And God is not to be mocked. But uh, here you go, brother. coming back. He is coming soon. It's time to repent. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, Los Angeles. Repent. Time is running out. The time is late and the night is far spent. Tomorrow is not promised. Lord wants to save your soul. He is longing for a relationship with you. He does not want you to perish, but that you come to repentance. Jesus Christ loves you, and he died on the cross for your sins. His blood was shed on the cross so that we can be forgiven of our sins. He made the ultimate sacrifice that no one else could do. That cross, that cross could have been meant for us. And many would say we're all deserving of hell. That's true. But he paid the price so that we don't have to go there. And the sad part is many people are choosing to go there. And God is not happy that they go there. It makes them sad. He's given them opportunities to come to him, but they rejected him. And probably there's more people in hell than in heaven. Remember in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Verse 13 makes it clear that broad is the way that leads to destruction. And verse 14, narrow is the way that leads to life. You can choose to walk. You can choose to walk the narrow path that leads to life. Or you can walk the path that leads to your own destruction. Hell, lake of fire. That broad path. You can't stay in the middle of the fence anymore. You're gonna have to make a decision one day. And it's made clear that in Revelation chapter three, that those who are lukewarm, those who are not caught, those who are not hot or warm, hot or cold, those who are lukewarm, He's going to vomit them out of his mouth. He's going to spit them out of his mouth. Basically being rejected. And from out of all, from out of all the seven churches, 
the Church of Laodicea, the lukewarm church, also known as the Left Behind Church. Is that how you're lukewarm? They are known as the Left Behind Church. And he's coming back, Lord Jesus Christ. You don't want to be wasting your time anymore being like, whose side I should be on? Pick a side before it's too late. Don't worry about, don't be like, continuing to second guess yourself and being like, am I sure I want to be on this side? You don't need to switch sides. If you truly love the Lord, you're not going to betray Him. You're not going to, if you love Him so much with all your heart, soul, and mind. He is the Almighty, the Lord God Almighty, the God of our salvation. He wants to save your soul. He doesn't want you to perish, but to repent. You must repent. You must be born again if you want to enter into the kingdom of God. When they talk about you must be born again, this isn't physically, this is spiritually. And if you're a new creature in Christ, the old things have passed away. You don't have to go back to your old ways. God doesn't let go of people. People choose to let go of Him. And that's the truth. And they're choosing to perish. But he's offering you his mercy, his grace, his love. He's offering you his forgiveness. And yet you want to reject him. Really. It's sad how many of you continue to go along with life. You just go along with life and not care where you're going to go after you die. You shouldn't care about your eternity because hell is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. You do not want to go there. You might as well repent while you still have a chance. I repent thee. I accept God and Señor Jesus como tu Salvador, your Savior. He wants to save you. No hay nadie como Él. Él te quiere mucho que Él murió. He died on the cross for you, that he loved you so much that he died on the cross for you to forgive you of your sins, to spare you, to not let you perish. You want to continue ignoring the truth? One day you're not gonna be you're not gonna be ignoring him on the day of judgment. Because you're all gonna to have to stand before him, I myself included. Un día todos vamos a dar cuenta por todos los cosas que hicimos en esta vida. We're all going to give to an account for everything we did, we did in this life. We have done in this life. Yes. And he records everything. Everything is recorded. We're all without an excuse. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory, as it's made clear in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. And in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Cry out to God if you want forgiveness, if you want to come to Him. If you're feeling convicted, you can cry out and call on the name of Jesus Christ. He loves you so much. He's not willing for you to die. He's not willing for you to perish. He's not willing for you to die to end up in hell. No. He wants you to come to repentance. He does. You might as well seek him before it's too late. And for those of you who expect this world to go back to normal, we're not going back to normal. I know we're not. Is, is, really, is really a digital thing inside your body normal? No. It's not. Who wants to have a permanent thing inside their right hand or their forehead? That's not normal to me. That's unnatural. God never said to take a mark in your right hand or in your forehead, which is the mark of the beast. No. The mark of the beast probably may already be here, but it's probably being developed. It might not be official yet. It might take a few months until they tell you it's mandatory. Until, until then, until they tell you that if you want to continue being in society, you need it. You need to take the mark. Oh no, no way, no way. Who wants to pledge allegiance to something so evil? I will not. I'm not gonna bow down to an evil leader. No evil leader is my leader. Only God is my leader. And I only pledge allegiance to the one true living God. The God of my salvation. 
therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You can resist temptation. If you trust in the Lord, he will help you find a way out from temptation. If you're ever tempted, you can rebuke Satan in Jesus' mighty name. You can rebuke him in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, you can rebuke him. And he will go away. He will flee from you. You can rebuke every antichrist spirit. You can rebuke every evil thing in Jesus' mighty name. And I rebuke every evil antichrist spirit that's in the world. I rebuke every evil thing in Jesus' mighty name. That all those evil things go back down to the pits of hell where they belong. That they be gone. They get casted out in Jesus' mighty name. I rebuke every evil thing. It's time to pick a side. You're either with the Lord or you're with the enemy. If you want to go to hell, that's your choice. If you want to go to heaven, you must repent. You must come to Christ. Your eternity will matter. You never know if you'll live another day. You never know if you're going to be around tomorrow. You might not even wake up to see another day. Just letting you know. We could die at any time. When our, when our time is up, we're all going to be standing before God. And he's going to judge us. But he's a righteous judge. He's going to judge us righteously. Amen. And no excuses will be allowed in heaven. All right, all right. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. Not everyone, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. 
depart from me, ye that work iniquity, workers of iniquity. He can tell you that on the day of judgment. What's scarier than dying from a disease is him telling you those exact things, those exact words. I don't want him to tell you that. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for myself either. No way. And it is a scary thing to hear. He can tell you that. Why not have him tell you, well done, faithful servant? That's way much better. It is. It honestly is. Thank you. If you're not right with God, you might as well get right with him right now. If you're not right with God and you want to die tonight or die tomorrow and you die not being right with God and you die in your sin, you probably know the answer of where you're going to go. Seriously, though, it's a serious matter. And seriously, when you tell a child of God to go to hell, I'm not going to go there because you tell me that. That's more of an insult, but I'll forgive you if you say that to me if you tell me to go to hell. People have said that before. It sounds like it's a threat at times. But when you mess with a child of God, you're messing with the Almighty Himself. When you mess with a child, you're messing with Him. And he's coming one day. Whether you like to believe it or not. You can't run away from Him forever. He's really serious. He is always according to his word. And he speaks it. And he is just and righteous. One who doesn't want you to perish. And if you think for a second, if any of you think for a second that the Christian walk is easy, it's not an easy walk. It's a tough walk. It's a challenge. There's going to be trials and tribulations. You're going to be hated for loving God. You're going to be hated for speaking the truth. You're going to have people betray you, talk behind your back. They're going to mock you, laugh at you, spit on you. They'll threaten to kill you. They're going to do these things because they know you love God, because they know you're a child of God. A true follower of Christ is, of course, going to be hated. There's more. As it's made clear in Matthew chapter 24. <laughs> deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake for so number for a number de Dios and there's also Matthew chapter 10 Matthew chapter 10 verse 22 and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Hallelujah. And also verse 28. And then there's verse 28. Matthew chapter 10 verse 28. And fear not men which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both, both soul and body in hell. And God can do that. He's the one who can destroy both. Fear God. Don't fear man. Even though Jesus Christ was a man, he is the living God. But not to fear men, men of the earth. But to fear the living God. The one who can destroy both soul and body. He is the powerful one, the almighty, the one who has full 
the one who has full authority. And then Matthew chapter 10, verse 24. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. He is the one who is above all. Him. Only him alone. forgiven. Jesus resisted the devil. There we go. My mistake. Jesus doesn't tempt. It's the devil who tempts. Yeah, you see right there. Even a preacher makes mistakes. You see? They make mistakes. That doesn't mean we hate God. We still love God. God understands we make mistakes, but God forgives us as long as we forgive, as long as we ask for forgiveness. The Lord will forgive me when I make a mistake. Amen. I didn't even do that on purpose. That was an accident. That happens, you know. We're not expected to be perfect. We're going to make mistakes like that. But the Lord may forgive me for saying what I said. What I meant to say was Satan tempts. But that Jesus resists Satan. Jesus resisted Satan. Just as Jesus was able to resist temptation, we can resist temptation. You can resist the enemy just as God, just as Jesus did. And Jesus is God. God in the flesh. Jesus is the Messiah, the Chosen One. Yes. Jesus doesn't tempt. It's Satan who tempts. Jesus wants to protect you. He wants to save you. If you trust in the Lord your God, 
the hard hour on, you can he can help you find a way out from temptation. He can help you to escape the devil, to resist the devil, the enemy. El enemigo, Satanás. No necesitas ese malo Satanás, ese maldad. Necesitas el Señor Jesús que es muy bueno con nosotros y Él te quiere mucho. Él te quiere salvar. No hay nadie como Él. Él es muy bueno y Él te quiere ayudar. Just as He can resist temptation, you can resist temptation too. And, he will, and the Lord Jesus Christ will help you find a way out and He loves you. that Jesus didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He calls sinners to repentance. Yes, he does. And he is the loving God, the author of salvation. The one who created us. He is our creator. We are to love the creator. this video was put on YouTube, you can go ahead and make false claims about me when I made that mistake about a few minutes ago. Go ahead. I'm not fake. I'm not a fake Christian. If I were fake, I wouldn't even be reading the Bible. I would be living in my sin. But I'm not a fake Christian. I am to show that I'm a true Christian according to Christ. A true follower of Jesus. Not a hypocrite, but a follower of the living God of my salvation. We are to love one another, help each other when we make mistakes, confess to one another our sins. Well, actually, Jesus forgives sins, but it's made clear in the scriptures, right, that we are to confess to one another, right? Right. But Jesus forgives sins. Yeah, Jesus forgives sins. He does. You don't go to a priest. A priest isn't going to forgive you of your sins. Je only Jesus alone can save, your, save you and forgive your sins. And there's only one mediator between God and man, and that is Christ Jesus, the Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's made clear in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. You don't need idols. There's only one mediator, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only mediator between God and man. If you want to continue worshiping idols, you're already committing idolatry. If you're doing that today, repent idolaters! Repent! Repent idolaters! You must repent. And those who are doing sex before marriage, repent fornicators! And those who are getting drunk, repent drunkards! Repent, repent, repent! You can be saved today. You don't need to be with the wrong crowd anymore. Why not, why not to be with the right crowd? Those who follow Jesus. The wrong crowd, the wrong sort of people will lead you into trouble. They will want you to sin more. Why not sin less? Resist temptation. You don't have to sin willfully. Don't die in your sin or in your pleasures. It's not worth to go to hell for your sin. It's not worth it. Why not be eternally saved, eternally secure? Anyway, Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. Verses 11 through 16. Verses 11 through 16 of Revelation chapter 19. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, 
and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with the with the vesture dripped dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And his armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty God. And wrath of Almighty God. Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is the King of kings. He is the King. King Jesus. Hallelujah. And we are to worship him. Only he is worthy to be praised forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If you want Jesus Christ in your life, you must turn away from your sins. You must change for the better. Have a new life in Christ. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man, therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Hallelujah. You can put away the old man and put on the new man. Put out the old you, put on the new you. In Christ. Hallelujah. We are to praise his name. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, she said good job. Thanks. 
Okay. Amen. John. Okay. John chapter 3, verse 16. Not James. <laughs> Alright. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. And then in the book of Titus, chapter 2. I might as well leave you all off with this verse. But before that verse, before, before Titus chapter 2, there's another verse that's also in Scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3. Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3 for when they excuse me first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3 for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape this word is trying to deceive many of you to help to make you believe that there's going to be peace and safety actually that peace and safety is going to go away one day there's going to be sudden destruction and you will not be able to run away don't get left behind they may get raptured that you don't have to deal with the tribute the great tribulation that you don't have to take the mark of the beast and not deal with the antichrist and be aware of the mark of the beast the mark for you will not be able to buy or sell unless you take a mark in your right hand or in your forehead. If you don't take that mark of the beast, when you, if you take that mark of the beast, it will lead you to the hell. It will lead you to the lake of fire. Hell and the lake of fire. Don't perish. Don't take this mark. Resist it. Even if it means being killed for Jesus. Be faithful. Even if it means being faithful unto death. Stay faithful to God no matter what. There will be a reward. Trust in God and resist the resist the enemy. Trust in God, resist the enemy. All right. All right. I'll leave you all off with this one last verse. Titus chapter two verse thirteen. Looking for the blessed hope, blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, hallelujah. And Jesus is God. Jesus is, Jesus is the Son of God. He wants to save your soul. Make sure to be looking up and stay faithful. Trust in God. He is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Be watchful and be ready. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. If you, if, you, if you want Jesus Christ in your life, we can pray for you, but you need to accept him. We can pray for you. If any of you want us to pray for you, we will pray for you. If you want us to pray for you, we will pray for you. We can do that. It's good to pray for one another. But as always, you know, Jesus Christ loves you. Jesus loves you. Seek first the kingdom of God, always trust in God, and get saved for the time is at hand. Repent and trust in Jesus. God bless you all.